Hi everyone, welcome to our sixth Industry Insights event, which is being hosted in line with Birmingham City University's Graduate Photography Showcase, Unmute Photo. For today's Industry Insight event, uh, we have Rachel Barker here from the publishing house Stanley Barker Books. So thank you so much for joining me today, Rachel, to present this artist talk on publishing. Um, I think I'm just going to pass it over to you now and let you present the talk. Um, if you want to feel free to screen share, that's perfect. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Nathan. Thanks for having me. So, yeah, I'll get started. I will um, share my screen. Oh, it's coming up. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Uh, let me just change that. <laughs> there you go. It should let you work now. Try again. You can't ever have these things run too smoothly. <laughs> and uh, view it in full the screen. There we go. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for anyone who is um, watching today. My name is Rachel. Um, I'm one half of Stanley Barker, um, a publishing company um, founded uh, in about 2004. Um, I'm originally from Birmingham, so uh, it's quite nice to be doing this talk. I grew up in the Midlands um, studying kind of arts and photography um, before moving to London, where I went to university at Central St Martins um, and I had a, career, a varied career doing lots of different um, things, mostly in marketing and PR, so I was able to gain quite a lot of experience um, in the sort of business side of things in terms of like promoting and marketing products, which has been quite useful um, since founding Stanley Barker. Um, whilst living in London, I met Gregory, who is now my husband and the other half of Stanley Barker. And we decided that we thought it would be a great idea to combine our um, passion and enthusiasm for photography um, by starting a publishing company um, so that's how Stanley Barker started um, and we basically just went out and found books that we wanted to publish and that's what we still continue to do today um, we just look for whatever we love and that we're really passionate about and try and find a way of making it into a book um, so today I thought it might be quite helpful to talk through a few of the things that we think about when we are looking at publishing a photography book. Um, and one of the main things that we think about um, first is, oh, is this not gonna, oh, there we go, um, sequence, um, which is really important and something that I think often gets overlooked by photographers or um, maybe gets thought um, through too much by photographers. So it's kind of making sure that you've got the balance there and making sure that um, the sequence is um, perfect, really. And that's something that we really work really hard on with our photographers. It's a, always a collaboration. When we start working with a photographer, we um, have um, a relationship where we're able to kind of all collaborate towards making a book that hopefully... In, at the end of the process, we're all really proud of, um, and we're all really happy with how it how it's turned out. Um, one of the ways that we can look at sequence is in a book that we first published. This was our first ever book. It was Studio Fifty Four by Todd Papa George, um, and the sequence in this is a really lovely way of thinking about how you can use images. The pictures are of um, a night at Studio 54, the famous nightclub in New York. And I think looking at them, you might think, oh, they're sort of disparate images, but actually the way we approached it was thinking about the party starting. So as you kind of open the book and start looking through the images, you've got people arriving at the party, sort of gathering, coming together, greeting each other. You've got people kind of coming onto the dance floor um, slowly sort of having a good time, um, people sort of chatting, having fun. And then the peak of the book is obviously the party in full swing, people like fully having a great time. And then towards the end of the book, you'll see in the sequence that actually it starts to kind of peter out. 
people look a bit sort of disheveled, um, a bit tired. You've got people lying on the floor. Um, and then obviously the book ends. So that's quite a nice way to sort of approach it. If you've got a series of images and you're thinking about how can I put these together in a sequence, think about kind of what sort of narrative might work. Can you tell a story through the images that as the reader looking through the book, it's going to be a really enjoyable experience to, to view it. Um, and it can be quite subtle as well. Some people might not really have, have to notice that to still enjoy it, but it's quite nice that it's just there in the background. And another subtle way of doing this, we did with a book called Approximate Joy by a photographer called Christopher Anderson. Um, with this book, it was more about looking at the images, taking them from day from night to day so looking at kind of light coming into the images towards the end of the series so you start out with quite dark images um, and as you sort of progress through the series you'll see they're becoming kind of lighter and you're getting kind of more um, day coming into the images and here towards the end of the book so I think that's really important is sequence and then obviously the other really important thing um, is design, which is something we um, take really seriously. We work with a great um, design um, team called the Entente, um, who also design bespoke um, fonts, um, typefaces. So every element of all of our books is thought through. Um, and I think that should always be something in the photographer's mind when you're thinking about how you want your book to look. Um, look to the work first. And I think the photograph, the photographs should really lead the design, not the other way around. So really thinking about what, what is your work about and how can you kind of reference that um, through different design um, ideas. One book where we did that um, in lots of different ways is um, Bill Henson's 1985. Um, and this was a book that looked at images taken in the, um, in suburbia in Australia during the 1980s. And Bill Henson had, had sort of um, juxtaposed these images with images um, of ancient Egypt and, and ancient Egyptian kind of tombs. Um, so we really sort of played on that and looked at things like taking like a scarab beetle um, where we kind of reproduced that and had it kind of redesigned um, on the front of the book. Um, here are some images from the inside of the book. And this was the scarab beetle um, reproduced on the front cover. And then a nice touch on the inside of the book when you open the dust jacket, it's, it flaps open and then printed all across the inside of the book is um, Egyptian hieroglyphics from um, the Book of the Dead, um, which is sort of like a secret thing that you find as you're sort of looking through the book. Um, this is another book that's um, quite nice in terms of the design ideas around it. Um, it's lo really looking at the time period in which the images were taken. So these pictures were taken in the 1970s in a street called Christopher Street. Um, and we really looked at kind of things that probably would have been produced around that time. Um, things like books with really thick board, um, ring binding, and really took the design elements from those um, ideas. Um, and the font um, is designed by our design team and this is a sort of screen print um, produced on the front of um, natural board so it's really sort of thinking about how how could we produce a book that would really kind of reference the images inside and give you a feel of it before you've even opened the book um, but it doesn't detract from the images themselves I think most I think actually all of our books when you get inside, they're free from any sort of design inside the book. You're left to just look at the images and enjoy them as, as they are and as they should be. Um, so it's really just about the kind of cover and those elements that where we play with the design. One um, thing that we think about as well is kind of um, 
once the book is produced is you have to sort of think about how you're going to get it out there into the world um and one book that for us quite recently has been quite successful is um judith black's pleasant street so this was actually released last march during lockdown um which made it quite difficult because we couldn't have kind of physical launches and physical events um but it was still actually a really um great book in terms of the amount of promotion we were able to get for it. Um, so Judith's book was featured in magazines like Le Monde, um, The Guardian, um, The Observer, along with kind of loads of other photography titles who um, picked it up and wrote about it. So it's really thinking about once your book's published or if you're publishing your book yourself, um, self-publishing it, then thinking about producing obviously a press release and then producing a list of contacts um, where you can send that release to to let people know um, the book is out. And these are some images from inside Judith's book. One of the things that we did as well was um, send the book to um, people that we respected, um, industry professionals and people that we thought might um, be able to kind of um, champion the book and one of those people that um, spoke about Judith's work, which was really, um, we were so grateful for, was um, Alex Soth. Um, and he spoke about the fact that Judith's work hadn't, um, before we published it, been widely seen and um, that he that he was quite pleased to see, obviously, that we published it. Oh. There we go. Um, we work with photographers of um, from all different backgrounds. So Judith, as I was just talking about, um, her work hadn't widely been seen, but she's now sort of gaining kind of um, much more interest in her work and selling her work to museums um, and talking about having exhibitions later on this year and next year. Um, we work with people like Robbie Lawrence. This is a picture from um, one of Robbie's most recent books. So we've worked with him on a couple of books, um, Blackwater River, and this is A Voice Above the Lynn. So Robbie's a fairly young photographer. Um, he um, is not as established as some of our other photographers, but he has huge popularity in terms of people following his work and buying his books. We also work with people like Trent Park, who um, is part of the Magnum Photo Agency, and Jim Goldberg. Um, another Magnum photographer. And this is a photographer called Michael Northrup. Again, not sort of widely known in the same way as say Trent Park or Jim Goldberg, um, but his work is, is again, hugely popular. And this is a um, project that we found actually via Instagram. Um, so that's always quite a good tool for photographers to use if they're thinking about how can they get their work um, seen by publishers. Um, and people in the industry, then I think it's quite a good idea to sort of have a good in, a good Instagram account where you can kind of be showcasing that work. Because um, we, we did also find Robbie Lawrence's work um, via Instagram as well. And then thinking about kind of approaching a publisher with your work when you've got a body of work that's ready for you. I think one of the biggest things that I say to photographers is make sure the publisher is the best fit for your work because there's so many photography publishers out there so I think it's really sort of doing your research um, and finding out um, what other books the publishers produce and how your work fits into kind of what they're doing so we definitely have kind of a style in terms of the work that we like to publish um, I think if you sort of look at our website and look through our books you'll quickly get a good idea of kind of what that is and what that would look like um, and whether or not your work might fit into that. Um, I also look for publishers who publish work that's inspired you or that work that is kind of perhaps quite similar in ways to yours because the chances are that publisher might be interested in that type of work. So that's quite a good thing to do. I think just definitely do your research and don't send out kind of like blanket emails to um, lots of publishers. I think kind of try and find the right types of publishers and build relationships with them. Because um, a lot of the time we get contact from photographers and it might be that we're not able to publish their work right now, but it might be something that we can kind of keep 
um, working with them on until we're able to publish it perhaps later on um, in their career. Um, so it's always good to kind of um, develop those relationships. Another good tip, um, especially for me, because um, I always find photographers come to us with bodies of work and then they sort of say, oh, I've already got loads of press coverage for it. It's already been featured in all these magazines and newspapers. And for us, actually, that's not that's not a benefit. It's not a bonus. It's um, the opposite. We like to kind of find work that probably hasn't been um, widely promoted and that we're able to then kind of we're able to do the promotion to help. Um, promote the book and I think with um, PR it's great to sort of focus all of that energy around something like a book launch or a gallery um, exhibition um, all combined both together which can be kind of really successful in terms of getting press coverage and getting kind of interest in your work and I think that's what we were able to do with Judy's um, Judith Black's book is that we were able to kind of release a lot a lot of press coverage timed with some online talks and events where Judy spoke about the work and it really created a lot of interest in um, her work which I think was was great for her and yeah if you're thinking about doing it yourself and um, con contacting kind of the media make sure you're contacting the right people so look at kind of who's writing about photography um, perhaps who's written about kind of similar photographers to you so again just do doing your research and making sure that you're you're contacting those people personally and it does take a long time but it's worth it so that's something that we always do um, we try and contact all of our contacts individually um, so that we're getting in touch with them and letting them know personally about books that we're working on that they might be interested in um, I think that's pretty much it in a nutshell yeah I think either way whether you're kind of thinking about approaching a publisher or um, self-publishing I think research is the is the key really sort of finding out um, why you want to work with a particular publisher or if you're publishing it yourself really thinking about those things like design and sequence that can kind of really make a book successful um, um, then thinking about how you get it out into the world. So I think a lot of people make a book and then it sort of stops there and they don't think about oh, the, the getting it into bookshops and getting it kind of into um, press and getting kind of it promoted and thinking about events as well, which is something we always do. Um, we try to kind of like time re the release of a book with perhaps a festival or a fair where you can kind of launch the book to a, to a wider audience. Um, so thinking about those things, I think can really make um, your book successful. Thank you for that, Rachel. <clears throat> that was really insightful. Great, yeah, I don't know whether um, I sped through it, so let me know if there's any sort of questions or uh, <laughs> well, we do anything have a that I can- time actually, a little bit of time left. Um, but I've just got one question that's come to my mind is, so what would you or how what would you expect um, a photographer who's coming to you with interest in publishing his work what would you expect him to come with would it just be um like images or would you expect them to kind of already have like a an idea of how it would be sequenced in a pdf format in like already started working on a design yeah, I mean, it can be either. I think for us, um, it's much more exciting if they sort of come fairly early on in the process and are sort of open to more ideas and more collaboration, because I think it can be almost more difficult if a photographer's already done the sequence and got the design and has that sort of set idea and isn't then open to perhaps changing that later on down the process. Because we're our design and our sequence is really important to us so we'd never just take a photographer's book design and sequence unless it was perfect um but i think it would be highly unlikely that we'd just take it and just publish it as as it is we'd want to kind of collaborate with the photographer and make it kind of you know a joint um thing so i think yeah even if the photographer's just got a folder of images which often it is you know sometimes like we'll contact photographers and will say oh you know we really love your work we'd love to work with you and literally it's just them sort of rummaging through their images and sort of sending us either like scans or like files of images and then 
us from there sort of saying, well, actually, this is the angle that we want to go with. Because but some photographers might take quite a sort of broad um, range of images of something. And for us, sometimes it's about kind of narrowing that down and just taking like a thin um, slice of, of something. So sort of thinking about well, is there one particular area of that work that we can really focus in on um, rather than just publishing it all and it being kind of not having like a, a, a proper sort of narrative or a proper story to tell thinking well actually can we just pull out like some of the images to use and so I think it's good I think photographers should be sort of open to sharing everything um, and just open to sort of ideas as well so yeah for us even if it's just like a folder of images that's great and then be willing to sort of share all of it so that we can see all of it even the pictures you think aren't good sometimes when you're sequencing it they actually can be really great to work in the sequence so it's good to see everything okay that's interesting and would you say just going back to the book that you showed us um the blue one with the ancient egyptian like symbols yeah um yeah, is it very system, much yeah. a like a cross collaborative process in that like design of the book, like the outside um, between like yourself, the actual designers, and the photographer? Is it very much collaborative? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's really important because I think it's got to be something that each person that's involved in the project is proud of. Um, so yeah, is it sort of like a back and forth, and it's that's part of the exciting bit of making a book really because it is you know we'll often send things to photographers and you know we'll say well, what what about this idea and it might not be quite what they had in mind so they'll come back with some feedback and from there we're able to kind of steer it in a slightly different direction and it just goes like that until we're able to sort of find a point where everything is as it should be um, and I think it works differently with different photographers because some people kind of you know have much more of an idea of what what they want or what they want to say with it and some people are kind of you know a bit more perhaps a bit more open to um our ideas and things like that so it sort of work every photography work with is quite different yeah okay it must be interesting to see like how the different photographers work and then if you were to work back with them again you kind of have an understanding of how they work Absolutely. As well. so yeah because a lot of things yeah will work with Time. so like Christopher Anderson mm. we've worked with uh, a few times and then um, Trent Park we're working with him again um, later this year and Mark Steinmetz we've worked with regularly so it's sort of you get to know them and you're able to kind of yeah have a really easy dialogue about how it should all work which is great yeah um, and you touched upon um, kind of like how you got into Stanley Barker so you did your BA right was that in publishing or was that photography related or related to something yeah, different yeah. yeah I actually sort of had like quite I never really knew that I would sort of get into photo book publishing I, I basically um, studied fine art so yeah I did my BA was in fine art um, but I always had an interest in photography and that's kind of what I enjoyed doing was photography um, and enjoyed looking at photography and buying photography books and then when I graduated I had to get a job obviously um, so my job was um, working for I had different jobs working with charities and then I ended up getting a job working for Blurb the print-on-demand um, company um, so we were working a lot with obviously print on demand books, but a huge part of that was photography. So we were able to kind of go to some of the big photography fairs, meet lots of photographers that were using Blurb as a platform to publish their photo books. Um, so it was really kind of um, just sort of establishing my interest in photo books. And it happened um, that at the same time, Gregory was working, also working at Blurb. So we kind of struck up a friendship and were able to kind of talk about photography and photo books um, every day, um, which gradually kind of led into us kind of thinking, well, actually, maybe we could publish a photography book um, ourselves. So, yeah, and we're both quite similar in that, you know, we're quite sort of passionate about things and we just kind of go and we would just go and do it. So, yeah, we just we just did basically just did it. Wow, that's so cool. <clears throat> it's 
really took quite a while yeah so from publishing our first book which was studio 54 um we sort of did it i guess initially it was it was more more doing it out of the absolute passion of photography and photo books and that we wanted to publish a book um rather than oh let's run a business um publishing photo books so it was really just done kind of like out of this like sort of naive love of photography um so we started with studio 54 and then we did bill henson's 1985 and it kind of like grew from there so to begin with we were publishing not very many books um but we were doing it because we just loved doing it and I had a job at the same time. So I was head of marketing and PR at Leica, the camera company. Um, so I was able to sort of continue doing that. And then obviously I'd come home on an evening and be sort of trying to sort of sort out what we were doing with the publishing side of things. And it grew so much that in the end, we had to just sort of both um, put all of our time and effort into it. And now it is, it is like every day we're, we're doing what we love. And that's quite incredible. I, I always think I'm not really sure like how we ended up um, getting to, to this point, but it's really quite amazing. And, you know, it's something that we love doing and we're working with some of the most amazing photographers who we've both loved since we started learning about photography. We both kind of admired their work. So it's sort of like putting together like a list of our dream photographers that we'd like to work with and then now we are working with um, a lot of them which is really really exciting it's incredible and do you know how many books you've published in total I don't know actually I, I probably should know um, but yeah it started out when we were just sort of published you know four or five a year and we it felt like that was a lot and now we're doing kind of more like 15 or 20 a year yeah. and that's probably our sort of max in terms of sort of how many we would publish mm. and that's just because we want to be able to give each project um sort of hands-on um attention really we don't want to kind of like do too many and then okay. not have the quality i think hopefully um lots of people feed back to us you know that they're, they're, they love the quality of our books the print quality we you know all of our books um are produced like the highest print quality that we can all of the images in the book we match to the photographer's prints. So we're kind of really making sure that's how the photographer wants their work to be seen. Um, and then just in terms of the design and the sequence and everything, the whole process, we just want to make sure that we're publishing the book. Every book has to be um, how it should be. It has to be perfect, really. For sure. <laughs> cool. Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today to speak to to speak to me to, uh, everyone that will watch this recording it was um, yeah, really interesting just to see an inside perspective from a publishing house because I've I've never um seen never watched a talk or seen a talk that goes that is with a natural publishing house so that's really great yeah brilliant well hopefully it will be enjoyable for people to watch definitely I'm sure it will be Great. Thanks a lot, Nathan. No worries. Thank you so much.